What's going on? My name is Alex Ramey and I'm the owner of DJ Cut Entertainment. And today I want to talk about how to pick out music for school dances, whether you're a student or a DJ. So let me give you a little bit of a background and why I do this approach when it comes to my school dances. Um, I used to just go into the nightclubs and just play music, you know, go through my library and just play whatever I had, whatever came up, whatever key I was in and just open format, just, just go for it. So then when I started moving into festivals, I really had to start thinking about the format of my music. And when I started formatting my music in this particular way, it was way more successful and it just led to better results. And I'm sure we've we've all done this where we got to the club, we did our DJ set, we thought it was great, we got off and we're like, oh man, I forgot to play this song, or I forgot to play this song, or I played this version, but I had that remix of this. So I found that formatting your music by hour before your school dance even starts is a way better recipe for success. So what I do is I go into my crates and I create crates by the hour. So school dance is usually about three hours. So I have my opening set, my middle set, and then my ending set. In each folder, I put in about 30 to 40 songs. You're like, man, that's a lot of songs for an hour. There's going to be some songs that I'm not going to play depending on where the direction goes. Sometimes I get to these school dances and from week to week, they're completely different. So I need to be prepared. You know, it's always good to have more songs because I can always move those songs to the next folder later on in the evening. So one of the first things I want to cover is make sure you come out of the gates really hot. And what I mean is when the kids come in, you want to get them excited. You don't want to just have some filler music that they're just kind of just strolling in, hanging out on the sidelines. You want to get them excited and engaged right off the beginning. And so usually what I'll do is I'll usually do like a tropical set or a house set, something with high energy uh, with a little bit remixed. Then there's going to kind of be the lull in the middle portion of it where I'm not doing so many remixes. I'm still keeping a high energy, but I'm doing more originals. And then at the very end, it's going to be high energy, and I'm going to hit them with like all the bangers that are on the radio. Let's touch on bangers on the radio. So what I do is I usually try to pick out a good 10 songs that I know are really hot. Kids are singing along. You know, they're popular on TikTok. They're popular on Instagram. Whatever those hot songs are, I'm going to spread them out throughout the night. Now, there's some songs that I'll play more than once at a school dance. And how I approach this is in the beginning, I'll play the, you know, house remix or the original in the middle. But at the end, I'm going to be playing the mashup, the transition, the trap remix, uh, something that's going to add a little bit more energy than the original song. So usually my approach to getting music is I usually meet with the student council and I'll have them put together a list for me to go off of. It's really vastly different from school to school. Some people like a lot of line dances. Some people like more hip hop. Um, so I get a list from that particular school. And then from that list, I can kind of create my playlist. I do make sure that the teachers sign off on that list because some songs that are appropriate for one school might not be appropriate for another school. It really just depends on where the school is uh, in the Oregon area. Along with the music, you need to be a hype MC. Um, this, it's like Simon says, these kids need to be coached. So we usually get on the microphone to help hype them up. And we try to match what the song is doing. So if there's a big drop in a song, we try to build up that energy. And so the kids are jumping up around, hands up in the air uh, when the hype of that song comes on. And so I feel this has a dramatic effect on the overall party, being that hype man. And it's a, a good match of not being on the microphone too much, but being on enough so they're engaged, jumping around, having fun. And this is overall going to create a more successful event. To me, it doesn't. I don't care if you're DJing on turntables, CDJs. To me, uh, it really doesn't matter. The average person outside of DJs are not going to know the difference. But you need to know how to beat match, and you need to know how to transition in and out of songs pretty quickly. 
uh, depending on the songs. If it's a really popular song, I try to play the full song and then mac, you know, mix out at the very end. But you should be able to flow from song to song uh, seamlessly without anybody knowing. So that way, if you have a song that doesn't really work, I'm not playing that whole song in like 30 seconds. I'm in and out to the next song. And this is usually where you get the oohs and ahs. So be careful when you're mixing because it can be your best friend or your, your worst nightmare. If the song is really, really hot and they're singing along, I'm going to let the majority of that song play. Now, when it comes to getting the request list, one of the reasons why I do this is because there's certain songs. Uh, for example, I went to a school and their school anthem was Dancing Queen by ABBA. This is a song that I don't ever really play at school dance. I played at a wedding, but not a school dance. But as soon as I played that, everybody just started getting in a big group, huddling together, hands up, singing along because it was a school song or there's some special event to this. So when you're meeting with student council, it's very, very important to find out what are those hot songs that you wouldn't you know, typically think of. Uh, for me, one of the hot songs I always play is like a Grease mega mix. It's cheesy, but everybody sings along. Um, I get the students interacting and then I get the kids interacting. So who is your customer? This is a question that I try to fulfill. You gotta realize when you're doing these schools, you're trying to do it for multiple events or multiple years. So the kids are gonna transition. So you need to make sure that you're playing for your customer which is ideally the teachers, student council, you know, they're the ones that are signing your check. So you need to balance playing music for the kids that they like, but also the, you know, student council and the teachers deem appropriate. Because if you're playing songs that may not have any cuss words, or if you let a cuss word slip, you know, the imaging in the song could be really bad. So you really need to be mindful of uh, what you're playing. And so think about your two different customers, because that's what's going to create for a successful event and you're going to end up getting that school over and over again. Hey, we're the junior class office of Rex Putnam. I'm Max. I'm Evan. We had a great time working with DJ Cut and oh getting all God. this set up. He had the best music. Very easy to work with. Amazing lights, sound. Great presentation. He everything. helped us with our announcements. It was Overall, awesome. to total success. We want him back next year. Yeah.